Hi everybody. Before entering into the video, just subscribe and share this video. Today we are going to see about digestion in small intestine and how digestion is occurring in the small intestine. The intestine will receive juices or the digestive enzymes from different organs. So first one, the bile juice, liver secretes bile juice. Second one is pancreatic juice, pancreas secrete pancreatic juice. And then the final one is intestinal juice. So intestine secretes intestinal juices. First let us see about the bile juice that is secreted by the liver. So bile is secreted in the liver and it is poured into the duodenum via ducts. At specific places, these ducts have been named with the different names. So the common duct that brings the bile juice from liver, we call it as common hepatic duct. That is common hepatic duct. Next, after common hepatic duct, cystic duct. Cystic duct brings the juice or bile juice from the gallbladder. So this is gallbladder. Next one, both the hepatic duct and cystic duct are united. Here, hepatic duct and cystic duct are united to form the common bile duct. So this common bile duct pours the collection of the juices from both liver as well as gallbladder into the duodenum via the duct. This common bile duct is uniting with another one duct here. We call it as pancreatic duct. So pancreatic duct brings pancreatic juice and it is uniting with the common bile duct and pouring their secretions into the duodenum. So at this place, the combination of both common hepatic duct, the combination of both common bile duct and pancreatic duct, we call it as hepatopancreatic duct. So it is hepatopancreatic duct. This is the hepatopancreatic duct. So through these ducts, they are pouring their secretions into the duodenum. At this junction, you can see a sphincter is getting opening and closing. And this sphincter, we call it as sphincter of OD. Can you remember that one? Sphincter of OD. The fluid that is flowing through the duct, you can see it clearly. Bile juice is in green color and pancreatic juice in somewhat yellow color. So they both are flowing through this duct and poured into the duodenum. So pancreatic juice and bile are released through hepatopancreatic duct into the duodenum. Next let us see the bile released into the duodenum that contains what are the things? They contain bile pigments. What are those bile pigments? They are bilirubin and biliveridine. They are the bile pigments which gives color to the feces and urine. And they also have bile salts, cholesterol, phospholipid, but they do not have any enzymes. So they are involved in breaking up of the fat particles into smaller micelles, but they don't digest any food because they do not have any enzymes for digestion. Bile helps in emulsification of fat. So that we call it as breaking down of fat into very small micelles, we call it as fat globules. So that is fat globules. You can see here in this diagram, the oil is broken down into small globules. These globules, we call it as micelles. So they are micelles. Bile also activates lipases to act upon the broken fat globules. The same globules you are seeing here now, the same globules will be formed in the intestine due to bile salts that are converting the oil or fat into small micelles. Next one is pancreatic juice. So pancreatic juice also contains many enzymes. These pancreatic juices are in, this, are in an inactive state. 
they need to be first activated. So the inactivated form of enzyme that is present in the pancreatic juice are trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidases, then amylases, lipases, nucleases, all these are enzymes that is present in the pancreas. Trypsinogen is activated into active trypsin by the enzyme called as enterokinase. This enterokinase is secreted by the intestinal mucosa and which in turn this trypsin they activates other enzyme that is present in the intestinal juice or the pancreatic juices. How this trypsinogen is converted into trypsin? Enterokinase activates trypsinogen into trypsin. Then trypsin is activating all other enzymes of the pancreatic juice. Let us see the cells that are present in the intestine. So intestinal juices and the secreting cells. First, we can see the mucosa of the intestine consists of many finger-like projections. We call it as villi. And these villi consist of various types of cells. Let us see one by one. They consist of enterocyte. Enterocyte, they are responsible for intestinal absorption. They absorb the like glucose or electrolytes into the cells. Then next one, mucus secreting cells. They all will present in the crypts of the liver cone, crypts of liver cone. And another cell, mucus secreting cell, then panet cell. Panet cell, they secrete lysozyme, which is responsible for killing the pathogens. So next one is enteroendocrine cells, the hormone secreting cells. So the intestinal mucosa, epithelium has goblet cells which secrete mucus. These goblet cells, they are responsible for producing mucus, which gives lubrication for the movement of food. Next we can see various other cells, which we call it as brush border cells. These brush border cells are responsible for secretion. The secretions of the brush border cells and secretions of the goblet cell, they constitute the success centricus or intestinal juices. They contain many enzymes like disaccharidases and dipeptidases, lipases, nucleases, etc. The mucus that is present in these intestinal juices and bicarbonates of the pancreas is having an important function that is to protect the intestinal mucosa from acid or from the acidic activity and they provide an alkaline medium. The pH of the intestinal juices are 7.8 so that is uh, above neutral state so it is alkaline in state which is optimum for the enzymes to act upon the food. So submucosal glands, they secrete intestinal juices. So those glands, we call it as pruner gland. They are also helpful for secreting mucus and the enzymes of the intestine. Next, the submucosal glands, that is the Brunner's gland. Have you seen that Brunner's gland? This is the intestinal wall. Inside, you can see many smallest, small villis are projecting into the lumen at the base of the at the base of the villa you can see clusters of grapes like structures these grapes like structures are clusters aggregated are called as Brunner gland the structure of the Brunner gland will be like this so small small cells are gathered and they are having a duct through that duct it will be poured into the lumen of the intestine that's all then we will see the remaining in the next class. So subscribe to this channel. Bye.